reach you But you're so hot that I melted I fell right through the crack Welcome back once again to Spirituality with a Spin. I am Ryan Keyes, your host. And this will be yet another ASMR-influenced podcast. So I encourage you to utilize the full features of this episode by using headphones or earbuds. And it will make it that much more involved. We have been talking about so many angles and so many parameters when it comes to awakening. Many of you are here because of a soulmate or a longing or a twin flame experience. And as you know, I prefer not to utilize a label. I like to look at everything as everything that we have was given to us, that we are caretakers of a garden that was made with all the goodness that we could ever need. That is here. We are here. We are in that garden. And everything inside of you is a representation of your surroundings. So as you encounter things in the world, they are merely an echo of what's inside. Now, how is that possible? How is my boss that hates me? Or how is the man that cuts me off on the freeway? Or how is my partner that is not pleased with my behavior? How is that related to me? Well, in so many uncertain terms, you are your own mirror. That's why I always try to put forth the concept to look past the label, to just dive in deep to the divine and understand that you are divine. You are not a mistake. You are a biomechanical miracle. You are engineered in such a way that whether you're eating potato chips or something perfectly designed for you, you can put that into action and your body will synthesize that and make that part of your being. All of these things on the planet are designed in the same fashion. We know what everything is, but we don't know what it's truly doing here. We don't know where it comes from. We don't know what an atom really, really is. We're dissecting it. We're trying to learn it, but we're not looking at it and its definitive purpose. We are seeing the details and the description, but we are not getting the deal. We are not understanding the divinity of all things. We understand our own needs. We understand our own struggle. We reflect that struggle and those needs to the outward bound world. And then we want to sit and say, what about me? What about me? Why don't I have clean air? Why don't I have clean water? Why am I eating genetically modified food? Why don't I have a good job? Why don't I have a stress-free life? Why can't I live and breathe and drink and eat in harmony? Why don't I have the partner that makes me feel complete? And we shift because we're able to see the description. We're able to see the details but we're not able to connect those to the divine purpose. We're not able to allow that to really set in deep. Why? So many things in this world are so easy to understand. Let's look at one of those easy things. If you eat life-giving good food, your body radiates. That's easy. If I eat food that isn't healthy, that is preserved, that is chemically laden, my body is not radiating. It's not at its full function. Now, from a soul point, my soul is outside and inside. 
my soul is perceiving things as the information comes in, but also operating from its higher awareness. My body, well, my body is a machine. It's a beautifully oriented and orchestrated machine, much more well-defined than anything we've ever had on the planet, but a machine nonetheless. So as I consume the fuel that is futile, that will ultimately corrupt the system, I'm aware of this, yet I continue to do it because I have a compulsion. I have um, fallen and succumbed to the idea that I don't have everything inside of me. I don't have everything that I need. I have been sold into the slavery of scarcity. I've been told that God is above, so I must always look above. I've been told that I am a ruler of this world so that anything and everything is at my beck and call. When truly God is all around, God is within. And I am no more a ruler than what I rule. I am no more a king than my kingdom. I am no more a queen than my court. Because when I operate irreverently, irreverence blossoms. It takes form. So we have been doing this for some time. We have been sitting by the wayside, allowing what we truly know to be inner wisdom to be corrupted. Is it our fault? Well, if I drive down the freeway, speeding, and I get pulled over, and I've broken a law, and I get a ticket, who is to blame? The law? The policeman issuing me the ticket? Or me, for understanding a natural law, disobeying it, and doing my thing? I'll let you answer that yourself. We have been given opportunity, opportunity, open door, a new year, a year of a one, a year in a nine year cycle that will change everything that we see around us. Do not limit your sight. Do not limit what you seek. Do not place a boundary on what can become. This pivotal year is in so many ways not only an asking an awakening a call it is a roar and the lion is under your feet you live and breathe alongside of this lion and this lion has protected you and provided for you now it's your turn the Creator has been so loving and so caring that we have been given a call, a consciousness, an awareness, a oneness. This twin flame, soulmate, divine partner purpose that you are so intrigued with that is pumping through your veins even as we speak, pulsating in your heart driving a connection deep into your being. It is a call. It is a call from what has created all that you see and created your consciousness. Asking for you to understand that that lion beneath your feet that has protected you and provided for you and stood by you now needs you. The year of planting, groundbreaking, basics, understanding the body, understanding that part of becoming is an awareness, is an opportunity, it's an opening, 
It's a chance. You have to take this chance. You have to make a decision. Every day you wake up is a day to make a decision. Any day that you don't is also indecision, which is the greatest decision of your life. Do not get lost in what you didn't do. Understand the potential of the open door of the awakening of what you can and what you are doing right now. This twin flame, this soulmate, this divine masculine, divine feminine is a wake up. Look around you. Look at the world. Look at it is out of balance. Is it not? Our world is out of balance. We're too busy looking for answers above to realize the answer is in love. Love that begins inside of you by recognizing that you are. Let me say that one more time. By recognizing that you are. I am, you are, we are. I am no greater than you and vice versa. We are designed the same, nothing superior. Everything in synchronization, the water, the earth, the sun, every element working as an exercise of allowing us to survive. When the earth starts to suffer, when nature starts to call out for help, it is our duty to answer. So God, the creator, the all, the everything, the eternal intelligence of intuition has placed a seed with inside of you, a seed that is planted and is growing. Unfortunately, not enough people are watering it. Not enough people are aware that it has taken root. This seed is a seed of seeking. You are now calling out to your divine understanding. One mind, one heart, one love. Through the course of this, the body and all beings are seeking balance. Balance between all things. An equilibrium. We are awaking into a state of awareness. We need to establish a state of balance. The balance of masculine and feminine energy, it doesn't matter whether you have the part or not. Everyone has masculine and feminine energy. Now, if we do not have a balance of the masculine and the feminine, and it doesn't even have to be concerned as divine, the masculine and feminine in itself is all things. It is a basic principle. We must seek balance, for it is out of balance. Men, it is okay to cry. Women, it is okay to talk. It is okay to express. It is your strength is in your flexibility. Your flexibility to establish a divine foundation which gives our feet a place to stand. And the male energy, the masculine energy, well, he's the heavy lifter. He's the one that comes in and helps. But the woman, the female, the divine feminine is the nurturer. We are the provider. We are the protector. But she is the nurturer, the knowledge. The true knowledge lies with the divine feminine. Because she understands the flexibility needed. She understands compassion. She understands grace. She understands giving. And as a man, if we do not have this divine female quality that is 
establishing itself and rooting itself inside of us. We become rogue. We become dominant. We become a disaster on two feet. We become greedy and we become dark. So we need our moon energy. We need this ability to see grace in the world. And I think even Yeshua, Jesus, was a representation of the divine feminine and the divine masculine coming together. See? So we have our examples. We have our evidence. We have our direction. Now you have to understand. If you are invited to a party, oh, it's a great party. Everyone's there. Everyone's having fun and you really want to go. There's a couple of things that have to happen to get to that party. Number one, you need to know what time it starts. Number two, it would help to know how to get there. Number three, it would help to know what you need to bring to the party and what should I wear? I don't want to show up dressed like a unicorn and it's a formal occasion. Well, luckily this party doesn't matter what you wear. So you are invited to this party, right? This party is a revolution. It is an awakening based in love and grace. The time is now. The direction is within. Because if you show up angry to this party, if you show up greedy to this party, if you show up depressed to this party, guess what happens? As soon as you walk into the door of the party, everyone there can sense your energy and you will get what you give. So even if you have this intimate divine connection come to you, if you are not seeking your best self to operate from a place of consciousness and compassion and awareness, it doesn't matter what you do. It doesn't matter who it is. You will not be able to complete this because no one will see you. No one can see you unless you show them you. Now this is why I am all about the four agreements, the ancient Toltec wisdom of becoming impeccable, becoming your true self. And your true self, it doesn't have to be perfect, let me say. Your true self, it doesn't matter. Maybe you're not so smart. Maybe you're funny. We all need someone funny. Maybe you're not able to lift 300 pounds. It's okay. We'll find someone that can do that. But bring your true self. Bring your energetic self. Because when you bring that true self to the party, you come through with your confidence of being you. And then when you sit down and you have conversation, when you have communion, everything that you are, Everything that you do becomes you, and you can't deny you. As if one of my great mentors used to say, Baby, you can't keep a good thing secret. That's right. If it works, and if it is rock solid, everybody's going to know. Everybody's going to want to be around you. Everybody's going to want to resonate at that frequency. So here's what I say. The secret to being in your divine purpose with your divine partner. It's one mind, one heart, one love. Yes. One mind, one heart, one love. It's about waking up and understanding today is a new day. The things that I did in the past where I failed Remembering those, cataloging those, doesn't help me find a new place today. Reliving my mistakes will not help me to do it right today. Learning from my mistakes, moving forward and letting those go, well, that gives me the opportunity to correct my path. You see? So what you are seeing, your access to your twin or your soulmate or your divine love, the person that will help you to neg negotiate and navigate through these waters 
is only waiting. Waiting for you to seek your higher self. And higher self doesn't mean it's floating outside above your head. Higher self means it's floating inside of your heart. It means that the very thing that will make you irresistible to the person you love is that smile that you wear, is that glow that comes from your heart. It's that compassion that bleeds from your veins. You come from a place of allowing. You have now shifted from the human experience of need and expectation into a little higher level of allowing and tiptoeing through the unconditional tulips of love. Love is a very delicate flower and it needs to be cared for and protected and nurtured and watered. And this love must blossom within your own body. Because if you are seeking a higher self, if you are seeking to be one with a partner that is going to reflect this awakening, that's going to allow you more access into becoming more conscious, where you will be able to do and answer this conscious call that has come from our designer, our creator, that we are still trying to figure out, isn't it that you would want to present your true nature, your true self, so that your divine partner can say, I see you, and I'm here, and I support you. And if there's anything that needs to be swept or cleaned, you can polish and, and, and remove the old tarnish. Right? No one's perfect. But don't try to be perfect when you're not perfect. That's a lot of work. Right? That's why if you're feeling sad, sometimes it's hard to force a smile. Sometimes you just have to cry and let it run through you so that that smile is found on the other side of that suffering. When you understand the reasons, when your body's allowed to go through that progression to heal. If you bury it and you don't experience it, it's going to come back later. So by answering this call and being you and being awoken, you begin to see. And you begin to see a deeper level of yourself. And that begins to resonate throughout all of your life. That begins to put that vibration out there that makes for a better life, an easier life. Like they say, only one man has to be enlightened for the world to be enlightened. Right? And for those of you that aren't getting that, it means that if I see the world through enlightened eyes, everything around me is enlightened. Therefore, my world is enlightened. And everyone around me will be waking up. Because I see them this way. So perception is very, very important in life. How you perceive. And if you continually, continually perceive the past, well, you're going to be stuck. So you must be mindful of the present. Understand the points that you want to relay of the past so that you don't repeat those. And you can reminisce about things, but hopefully your present is creating these dreams and these exciting things that you're experiencing and not having to reminisce. But reminiscing is okay. I'm going to read you something here. When the pure essence of the masculine energy is distorted, it turns into aggression. When the true essence of feminine is distorted, it becomes resentful and withdrawn and withdraws love and connectedness. The feminine energy is all about relationships connecting with love and support and nurture. Sensitive to the needs and feelings of others. The masculine in its true essence gets the job done in a way that is reliable, trustworthy and protective. When the masculine is balanced, it responds and communicates in such a way that others feel safe physically, as well as emotionally. So, and that's by I.L. Hurst, which I like that quote. You are seeking the wisdom within because you have felt as if you were without. As I've said, the twin starts within, 
the work is inside, when you begin to see that you are the I am, when you begin to see your connection with everything around you, this calling starts to make sense. That pull inside, even to the other person, starts to make sense. When you believe in balance, the true masculine will begin to bring confidence without arrogance. It will give rational thinking without the need to control. And it will honor through awareness instead of war. It will provide stability and strength and courage no matter the shift. And when the true feminine brings a deep wisdom rooted in trusting of intuition and heart, it becomes passionate, it becomes creative, it becomes nurturing, and the ability to present this life-giving force becomes all. And the true feminine begins to support that deep, heartfelt nurturing of the creation, of the creator, passing along the energy from one generation to the next. And as you begin to feel these things, as you begin to understand these things, you begin to see that the way you change the world is you change within. As you begin to change your perception, so your path begins to blossom. You want divine partnership. You want twin flame. You want soulmate. Whatever the label is that you put on it, you're seeking a person that you can become a companion with that will be part of your experience the highest part, a part that will allow you passion, and it will allow that passion to permeate through purpose, right? That's what you're looking for. So in order to get this, if the perfect person walked up to you today, is there anything inside of you that you would like to work on to make the opportunity of that becoming successful that will give you a better chance? Because if there is, start the work now. And if you have this person in your life, begin to look deeper within yourself. Ask yourself, am I being my true self? Am I being authentic to what it is that I desire? Am I showing this perfect person for me, this path partner? Am I showing them my true self, my true nature, who I am? Am I allowing them to see the true inside so that when they say I love you, they love every part of me? If not, begin to let that come in here and there. You don't want to drop it all on them like a big truckload of, of bricks because that's a lot of weight. But you begin to unfold and unravel and you begin to allow that perception to take flight. We can't save the world in one day. It's going to take a while. It's going to take work. Divine purpose and divine relationship is going to take work. It doesn't happen overnight. Being in balance of your body, of the divine masculine and divine feminine, it doesn't happen overnight. Preparing the body from all the damage from previous. If I drink Pepsi two liters a day for the past seven years, well, my body will begin to prepare and repair itself if I start drinking water instead of Pepsi, yes. But it's going to take a while. Like they say, Take a picture of your full self today, and that will be reflected seven years from now. So what would you like to see seven years down the road on the physical fashion and who you are inside as a mirror of health and where you see yourself? Start taking responsibility for these things. And then you start to uh, become part of this movement, this awakening of manifestation. Balanced. Balance is the key to becoming one with the person that you're seeking, with yourself, with all things. It is the only key. And this is innate inside of you, this truth. You don't need a guru. You don't need um, a wisdom keeper. You don't need a book to know what is right and true. If you look at a label and it has 10 ingredients that you can't pronounce, it's probably not from the earth. Natural. It's been manufactured, right? So 
I'll eat what I can understand. I'll go with where I know. I will exercise in what doesn't hurt me, but what helps me. I will feel and I will see that around me and make a difference in my day every day. You see a piece of trash on the beach and you're walking, pick it up. You walk by it, you walk by a dirty world, right? Everything is right by your feet, right by your hands. You seek a twin or a soul partner or whatever it is that you label this. When you see, when someone sits next to you and you love this person and you hold their hand and it echoes into your being, give them a good look inside of their eyes and show them who you are. Connect. Communicate. Commune. Become one. Understand that just the physical is the surface. There's a lot of avenues to go deeper. That divine connection has a lot of layers, has a lot of love, and you can go as deep as you like. So understand these things. It's going to take trust. It's going to take action. It's going to take appreciation. When I was teaching Law of Attraction, my main um, motto was action, attraction, action, and satisfaction. Because you want to know what you're attracting to you, first off, right? Then you have to put action into it because it just doesn't come. You don't win the lottery unless you buy a ticket. And then satisfaction has to be there. You have to find a certain level of being satisfied and appreciation and fulfillment in what you have worked for. Because if you don't, you become the person that is always climbing the ladder. What's next? What's next? Ah, I just need a little bit more. And then you go back into the divine um, overrunning, the divine balance. You become too much to the masculine. You become centered around property and it becomes a different story. So let's look at the layers. Let's go deeper. And as we go forward in these talks, we're looking at the body basics. We're building the body from the ground up and the crown down, meeting in the middle, which is the heart center. I'm not a being of light. I'm a being of love. All light does is show you where to go. Love will give you what you need to know. Light doesn't change anything. It just shows you where it is, right? So don't get caught in the label. Let's look at things through the eyes of love. Love brings compassion. Light just brings the ability to see. Words are powerful. Language is powerful. How you say things, the intention behind what you say is powerful. Let's take this walk together. Thank you for your time. Thank you for your patience. Thank you for your understanding. Do not forget that I have a contest going for free coaching sessions. If you subscribe, like, and leave a comment below. And I would encourage you to leave a comment whether or not you want to be in a contest because this is a community. This is your chance to reach out and to connect and to converse and to commune with people that are seeking a higher purpose. And that should be reason alone, right? Peace, light, and love. And I will see you on the other side.